Okay, so today we're going to talk about half-life. Half-life is the amount of time required for half of a sample of a radioactive isotope to decay. Alright, so what that means is, for example, if we have a piece of uranium that has a mass of 100 grams, after 10 minutes, how much <coughs> is left um, if the half-life is one minute? Okay, so if each half-life was one minute, and we had a total of 10 minutes, that would mean we would have 10 half-lives. And if we have 10 half-lives, that means our sample decays by half 10 times. So we would take one half of our sample 10 times. All right, so our sample was 100 grams. If we take half, we're dividing by two, and we would do that 10 times. So it would be like two to the 10th power. Okay, so again, this means that we are having the sample 10 times, okay? And mathematically, to solve that, we would do 100 divided by 2 to the 10th power. And we get 0 0.097, need four significant figures, so 97, Six, six grams. Okay, so let's look at another example. So if we have a half-life of nitrogen is 10 minutes. If the starting sample has a mass of 2 grams, how much remain after 40 minutes? Again, the half-life, so each half is 10 minutes. So if I have 40 minutes, that would mean if I take 40 and divide by 10, that I would have 4 half-lives. If I have 4 half-lives, then I need to take one half of the sample four times, right? So my sample was two grams. If I take half of it, I divide by two, and I do that four times, so then to the fourth power. So again, two divided by two to the fourth power leaves me with 0.125 grams. And I have three significant figures to begin with, and so I get three significant figures in my answer. All right, example two. If 200 grams of an isotope by two to the fourth power leaves me with 0.125 grams, and I have three significant figures to begin with, and so I get three significant figures in my answer. All right, example two. If 200 grams of an isotope decays at 25 grams in 24 seconds, what is the half-life? Again, half-life is a time. Okay, so it has to be either minutes or seconds or hours. It's not the number of half-lives. It is the actual time of one half-life. So if I had 200 grams to start with and now I have 25, I need to figure out how many times I took half of 200 to get to 25. So if I take half one time, I get 100 grams. If I take half again, I get 50 grams. If I take half again, then I get 25 grams. So how many times did I take half? Well, there's one, two, three times, right? So I have three half-lives. So each of those, right, is the time of the half-life that I'm looking for. All together, right, equaled 24 seconds. So if all three of them together was 24 seconds, then each one of them had to be eight seconds. And so the half-life, which we use T1 half to symbolize, is eight seconds. And since I have two significant figures, I would have to 8.0 seconds. Okay? One more example, and then you'll try some on your own. The half-life of iodine-131 is 8.07 days. If 25 grams are left after 40.35 days, how many grams were in the original sample? So if I'm doing the original sample, that means my that number has to be getting bigger, right? Because I had 25 grams left. So we're basically doing the opposite of what we did in these up here. We're not dividing our mass by two, but instead we'd be multiplying by two some number of times. So we would take our mass of 25 grams that were left, and we would multiply by two some number of times. Well, the number of times has to be determined from the half-life time and our total time, right? So how many halves were taken? If it was 40.35 days, and each half took 8.07 days, 
then it would be five half lives. So that means we would have taken half of whatever our sample was five times to get to 25. So to figure out what that, what that original sample was, we'd have to take our 25, multiply by two five times. And so we put in our calculator 25 times two to the fifth, and we get 800 um, grams. Now we had three significant figures, so we have to have this decimal point here to make it grams, or I could use scientific notation to 8.00 times 10 to the second grams to get three significant figures. Either of those would be appropriate. All right, so I'd like for you to pause and try the you try problems on your own, and then come back, and then we'll go over them, see if you got them right. All right, so let's look at you try problem number one. <coughs> So if the half-life of an isotope is 62 days, 600 gram sample will remain, how much of it will remain after 186 days? So we have to take our total time and divide by our time of our half-life, and we find that that would be three half-lives. So that means we would take half of our sample, which was 600, three times. So 600 divided by two to the third power, and we get 75. Now, our significant figures here for show we have four in our mass, so we need four in our mass, so 75.00 grams. All right, so number two, we have 300 grams that's decaying to 75 in 30 seconds. What is the half-life? Remember, this has to be timed. Okay, so how many times did we take half if we started with 300 and we ended with 75? So I take half one time, I get 150. If I take half again, I get 75. So I took half twice. Right? So that total time, right, was 30 seconds. So each of these halves took 15 seconds, right? Because 15 plus 15 is 30. So the half life time is 15 seconds. Okay? And then number three, what is the half life of an isotope that decays from 100 to 25 in 10.4 hours? Okay? Again, what is the half life? We're looking for time. Right. All right, so we decay from 100 to 25. So we start with 100, take half one time, we get 50, we take half again, and we get 25. So that was two times we took half, and that time total was 10.4 hours. All right, so each one of these, right, had to add together to equal 10.4 hours. All right, so each one would be 5.2 hours, so that's 5.2 plus 5.2 is 10.4. So the half-life is 5.2 hours. And we had three significant figures in our time, so we add a zero there. All right, so tomorrow we will practice this some more in class.